along with the many other unexplainable feats, undoubtedly left by a highly advanced, highly capable lost civilization. There are the countless examples of extreme precision stone cutting. Not only is this remarkable past capability visible in their many stone walls and fortresses alike, but also in their exquisite artwork. If we look upon the statues of ancient Egypt, for example, the symmetry, along with the proportional precision present within their statues, is not only perfection personified, but unquestionably far too advanced for the so-called academically claimed builders to have achieved. According to the academics, along with their subsequent supposed accurate writings, these extraordinary feats of artistic perfection were somehow created by a group of individuals who were merely equipped with copper tools. Not only is this claim clearly ignorant of reality, but to create such works of symmetrical accuracy was unquestionably the work of a group of individuals far more advanced than even that of the Victorians, let alone those who thrived along the banks of the Nile more than 3,000 years ago. Not only is this precision present along the Giza Plateau, but it is also found at ancient sites all around the world. Masterfully created statues and structures, often carved straight out of stone bedrock, with such vision and artistic prowess that many now presume that the individuals capable of such feats must have had advanced machinery at their disposal. Most of ancient India, for example, is created with such delicacy and exactness that we today could only accomplish the same with the utilization of modern machines. Furthermore, many scholars and independent researchers, even a number of highly recognized academic Egyptologists, have reluctantly concluded that many of the basalt, gypsum, and other vases shaped from extremely hard stones and indeed, a number of multi-ton sarcophagus lids were indeed turned into the shapes we see them as today, on some kind of ancient, enormous lathe. This conclusion is made regardless of the fact that to create such enormous stoneworks on a lathe would have undoubtedly been out of the realms of capabilities for those who are currently claimed as their creators. Not only do the ornamental artifacts of Egypt and much further afield strongly indicate machined working. But there is also overwhelming evidence of these same machines, reminiscent of modern stone cutting equipment present all over the world. Yet conveniently, it is quietly ignored by the same individuals who have supposedly unraveled the history of these sites. Puma Panku, Giza's basalt floor, other areas throughout Giza, Peru, Malta, the list goes on. All these sites not only indicate an advanced, highly capable constructor, but also possess countless marks that, as of yet, we can only explain logically as having been left by precision, quick-rotation, stone-cutting machinery. They are yet another overwhelming collection of evidence, which not only flies in the face of current academic explanation, but proof of an advanced, now lost civilization having once been responsible for these sites' construction. They are highly compelling. Many ancient sites found scattered all over the planet share an enigmatic feature. A pattern of scarring left upon their megalithic blocks and often upon their walls, once left by a technology built by an as yet not understood civilization. We've previously covered the perplexing technique often used by ancient wall builds, found all around the world in the form of mysterious metal clamps. Used to seat huge stone blocks as they settled over the following years, these clamps, dated to similar times within antiquity and varying in style from continent to continent, somehow turned up all over the world at around the same time, strongly suggesting some form of intercontinental travel and thus sharing of technologies. Furthermore, and perhaps more intriguing, are the links that we, here on the channel, along with others in alternative research, and even funded institutes from nations around the world, have begun to notice, and hopefully triangulate, a signature left by this once highly advanced group of individuals. The most noticeable of these sites, and the one which initially started us upon this journey, was Longyu Cave in China. A cave system hewn from solid bedrock, 
leaving no waste piles of stone anywhere, marking the stone with a telltale scar pattern. These parallel marks are not just found at Longyu. Similar yet not identical marks have also been found elsewhere on Earth. A slight variation in style is what one would expect with shared knowledge. As with the metal clamps, a slight variation can be found from continent to continent. These similar marks can also be found at the ancient quarry of Yangshan, China, and Petra in Jordan, and both argued for years to actually be the workmanship of a civilization far older than any noted within modern academia. These marks were then discovered to be upon the ceiling of Cave 1 at the ancient site of Mamalapuram within India, another site which in places shows levels of erosion far in excess of that which should be seen at a site dated within known history. Yet perhaps the most impressive of these marks, and most probably the ones made by the conceptual machine of origin, are the scars witnessed and now subsequently catalogued at Baalbek. These are far too large for any hand tool, made into solid granite with such precision. These also display circular motions, as if left by a modern day tunnel boring machine. This evidence, undoubtedly unnoticed upon many more ancient sites, is clearly compelling evidence to support our channel's hypothesis that a mysterious history once occurred here on our planet, and will hopefully shed some light on the amazing people responsible for this phase of our past. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. We recently covered the astonishing ancient megaliths known as the Colossus of Memnon, a pair of 1,000 plus ton statues that have not only survived unknown eons into the modern day, but still possessed some of their most intriguing features all the way into known recorded history, most notably during the Roman Empire, when they were often regarded as having been able to sing at first light every day. We also touched upon the little-known conclusion, made by a number of individuals and even funded academics, referring to many other enigmatic artifacts that have been found across Giza and even Egypt as a whole as having been once lathe-worked. These often stone artifacts are so precise in their construction, with pottery even displaying a level of delicacy from their makers, that the only explanation for their existence could be attributed to having once been machine-worked, with the ancient Egyptians, claimed as their so-called makers, having once possessed enormous lathes, something modern man has only understood and utilized for a very brief time span, with a number of multi-ton sarcophagi also sharing this explanation for their creation. As to explain them as having once been made merely by hand is not only illogical, but almost an inconceivable tale to attach to such precisely made stonework. Created with not only astonishing symmetry, but also an astoundingly delicate and precise attention to detail, which modern man has only attained using modern lathes. Yet any explanation as to how these lathes were powered how these individuals worked such enormous stones, or indeed what tools they utilized to cut such hard stones, remains largely unexplained. It is as if modern academia had been cornered by these past capabilities of this now lost civilization, having to admit that such precision can only be accomplished with seemingly advanced technology, yet conveniently leaving any practical explanation of what these technologies looked like, where they went, or how they were made or used, absent from their explanations of these incredible artifacts. Yet, interestingly, ancient Egypt is not the only place which contains these remarkable relics. Baba Lovo, also known as Baba Lovka Palace, is a historical building located near the city of St. Petersburg, Russia. This palace was built towards the end of the 18th century, during the reign of Catherine II of Russia and one of the most astonishing relics found within this building is the so-called bathtub, which is claimed to have been made for the Tsar Alexander I. This explanation of origin is regardless of its incredible size, symmetry, and indeed precision, in which it was once cut with precision that just like the enigmatic artifacts that can be found within Egypt, should only have a logical explanation of creation, which included that of a lost technology or more specifically, an enormous lathe and heavy-duty yet precision-cutting instruments. Yet curiously, this explanation is absent from mainstream academia's explanation, 
as to the origins of this enormous multi-ton stone dish. Nero's bathtub is yet another smoking gun of this now lost technology, and indeed lost civilization. And although the vaults beneath where it lay within the Vatican measures an incredible 25 kilometers in length, packed full of hidden writings, artifacts, and historical controversies, this so-called bathtub is housed in full public view upon the floors of the Catholic palace above. These hidden vaults spared its presence, as if when first displayed, those in possession of it did not recognize the past accomplishment that this so-called bathtub once was. Not only the unusual shape of this other enormous dish for a bathtub, but the technology and techniques of stonework that would have once had to have been utilized to create it. They clearly believe that it was indeed created by Nero himself and not a past relic of a now lost civilization, with all similar relics found within ancient Egypt exposed as ancient machine stones. The question is, who made these ancient relics? How did they make them? And if made by the claimed builders, why is this technology now lost? They are undoubtedly highly compelling. There are a considerable number of ancient anomalies located within Egypt. These ancient feats of engineering litter sites and the quarries the stones were sourced and shaped at. And although many of you would have heard of Aswan Quarry, Elephantine may be a less familiar location to you, and for good reason. Not only are the pyramids one of the most perplexing, near perfectly constructed, and as yet unexplained ancient architectural accomplishments on Earth. But how an ancient civilization, supposedly placed within permitted known archaeological history, accomplished such a feat, or indeed why? What was their original purpose? Academic contradiction, a severe lack of anomalous artifacts explored, never mentioned or somehow conveniently go unnoticed. However, in the real world, beyond the boundaries of the fenced or so-called schools of education, thanks to our own work and the presentation of such a volume of inexplicable events artifacts, ruins or megaliths, along with many others allied within similar fields, independently funded researchers, investigative agents, and many more sometimes even noticed first by a viewer credited with its rediscovery within our coverage. Thanks to all this movement working to expose such enigmas, has meant that not only are these incredible characteristics now being documented, mentioned, popularized, photographed and studied more and more each day, now being recognized by more and more critically thinking individuals individually finding evidence of lost technologies that had until then either been undiscovered or deliberately overlooked by the funded academic. The vast catalog of unexplained architecture, again growing by the day, but also the often accompanying curious stone cuts, scars, and striations, all clearly left by high-speed disc-cutting machine, a signature tool mark, identical to that which is left by modern-day power tools, along with the still absent demonstration of the methods used to construct the pyramids leads anyone to this ongoing and seemingly most controversial of arguments regarding the origins of the ruins found across Egypt. The Colossus of Memnon, each one weighing far over 1,000 tons, would sing every morning an amazing ability we have covered in a previous video, a curious characteristic reported all the way up until the Roman era. We also covered the thick layer of sea salt once found coating the pyramid's ground and underground caverns, along with a water line reported at around 40 meters up their sides, still visible during the Spanish invasion. This clearly suggests that the pyramids and their accompanying sphinx are in reality so old they even had once been submerged in ocean waters. An ancient ocean, which over the eons has shifted, leaving behind sediment in the form of the desert sands. There are many enormous ancient megalithic stones hidden in and around the three great pyramids of Egypt. Not only are there enormous ancient stones virtually hidden in plain sight, thus although walked across, largely overlooked, hardly ever mentioned, 
and never explained in regards to their transport and placement, as modern academia will never be able to provide a logical, sound explanation for these feats. The casing stones, an area of interest we have explored and documented, not only displayed vastly different ages, but also construction methods and types of stones sourced and used. Ultimately, undeniable proof of efforts to preserve the outer stones of these incredible ancient pyramids later on within their history. Signature tool marks, unique features such as protuberances, masonry shapes, polygonal stone walling, and many other features which we have discovered during our explanations into the relics of lost antiquity. Yet Egypt's most intriguing assets, and we feel the most baffling relics which all alternative historians should have within their debacle armory, are undoubtedly to be found within the once abruptly abandoned quarries. The unfinished obelisk found at Aswan, being one such relic, the most well-known of these incredible stones by a long way. Not only is the obelisk over 1,000 tons, but also due to the identifiable scoop-like tool marks left upon its granite sides. A signature scarring, which again, we have so far found, explored and shared this marking at many other ancient sites around the world. Who were the original builders of the Great Pyramids? Were they the same group that quarried Aswan? What tools did these people use to cut many of the relics still left at the Elephantine Island Quarry? How can anyone gaze upon such precision stonework and not ponder? How did he accomplish such an incredible finish with such hard stone, with such soft chisels and those made of copper? Not only do we find the currently attested tale of events vastly incomplete, but in many ways virtually impossible. Predictably, we are often confronted with an illogical explanation as to the origins of many unexplainable ruins. Yet Egypt, in particular Aswan and Giza, were clearly the work of a group capable of working and building with 1,000 ton plus stones. With columns of pink Aswan granite, weighing over 14 tons each, over 10,000 kilometers to Baalbek. Is this connection mere coincidence? Or are the builders of said sites connected somehow? Possibly one and the same? Questions we get closer to answering every day. We find it highly compelling. Bazda Cave, within modern-day Turkey, is unquestionably an astonishing place. An enormous cave system that many people simply assume is a natural formation, with select areas quarried out, subsequently used to build numerous ruins throughout the area. However, what many people have seemingly overlooked, and we presume funded academics have deliberately ignored, are the signatures left all over the stonework throughout the network of caverns strongly indicating that this huge complex was once, somehow, hewn by ancient man. Also, and perhaps most intriguingly, is that this task was completed using a number of different advanced tools, whose marking, thanks to ours and others' astute research, has also been found scarred upon many other ancient sites, some located far away from this enigmatic cave system. The stone, once quarried out to create this enormous cavern, subsequently located as having been used to create a number of remarkable precision-cut monuments, including a once-existing wall which surrounded an ancient site known as Hiran. Additionally, due to the realization of this quarried stone having been used in Hiran, in addition to our own previous research, we have successfully linked Bazda to yet more ancient ruins all dated to vastly different eras within history. Thanks to our channel's creator possessing a photographic memory, we have correlated undeniable characteristic similarities, connecting many of these ancient sites throughout the world. Firstly, the signatures left by advanced stone-cutting technologies, tool marks left upon the cave system's walls. Scars upon the stonework, which are present at many other sites, Baalbek in Lebanon, Petra in Jordan, Yangshan Quarry within China, and at least two rock-cut monuments within India, the roof of a precision-cut cave, 
and an unfinished temple known as Veduvan Coil. This crescent-shaped scarring, often of an overlapping fashion, we feel, is reminiscent of scars left by modern-day tunnel boring equipment. Yet due to the lack of in-depth research surrounding such anomalies, with these tool marks, as far as we are aware, only receiving limited attention at Baalbek and merely photographed at Yangshan, have begun to name such markings ourselves in an effort to categorize and identify such curiosities being discovered worldwide, with these now known to us as crescent cup and ring marks. The second form of scarring, found upon much of the cave's roof, now known to us as groove and ridge markings, are distinctly different in form and appearance to the crescent cup and ring marks. These rows of grooved scars, however, are identical to those found in plain sight upon the unfinished obelisk located within Aswan Quarry, Egypt. A stone monument well over a thousand tons in weight which has long been academically argued as having been abandoned where it lay, due to a fault line discovered during the quarrying process. However, interestingly, others have presented strong evidence that this crack appeared later within history. A fellow alternative researcher, Chris Dunn, argues within his book Advanced Technology in Ancient Egypt that the crack happened later on in the obelisk's life and that the monolith was abandoned before the fault appeared. Backing up his claim, he shows that details upon the monument were being engraved over the top of the location of the fault line, an undertaking that would have clearly been illogical. Although he does not put forward a postulation as to why this crack occurred, we believe it may have been due to a shift in the surrounding geography, more than likely a ground-shifting earthquake not only cracking the obelisk, but possibly due to and accompanied by a cataclysmic event, which quite possibly caused the demise of the civilization, who were liberating the obelisk, thus leaving it unfinished. But I digress. Our focus is upon the scars left by enigmatic, clearly advanced stone-cutting tools, preserved with clarity upon the erosion-resistant granite of the obelisk. These exact markings also undeniably litter the ceiling of the Bazda cave. Additionally, these groove and ridge marks are also found upon the megalithic, often polygonal stonework within Peru, at Cusco, the fortress of Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, to name but a few. The third set of signature scarring upon the cave stone walls links Bazda cave to another similarly gigantic, artificially created cave system, known as Longyu Caves, located within China. Once an undoubtedly immense excavation, yet the quarried stone from this undertaking has never been located. Millions of tons of stone seemingly vanished from the face of the earth. However, thankfully, the quarried stone from the Bazda cave systems, as mentioned, was utilized and located. However, the civilization responsible for shaping these quarried stones at Haran were unquestionably responsible for several other sites found around the world. YouTube channel New Earth, first linking these curiously shaped stones to Nimrod's fortress on Mount Hermon with Jerash in Jordan, with us continuing this trail of connecting ancient dots, thankfully due to the uniqueness of stonework. Let's compare the Nimrod fortress with this uh, historic city in Jordan, which according to mainstream sources was conquered by the Romans and they built their typical Roman architecture consisting of columns and so on on the top of the older ruins. So here they are assuring us that the Nimrod style large blocks are pre-Roman. Now, those very same blocks 
when they are in Baalbek, they are telling us it's Roman. In the Temple Mount, they are again assuring us that they are some 2000 years old. In Bosnia, they are telling us they are whatever, three or more thousand years old. And of course, they are built by some obscure unknown tribe of which even the name they had to fabricate. Enabling us to link the Royal Kurgan and Crimea to New Earth's discoveries and now to the ancient ruins of Haran in Turkey. Not only can we argue that this cave system was indeed man-made, but is the only site we know of that possesses such an array of these enigmatic stone-cutting technology scars, allowing us to successfully link it to at least 15 ancient sites around the world. The cave itself, Basran, Haran, Baalbek, Petra, Jerash, Yangshan, Longyu, Vetavan Coil, Malmala Param, Cusco, Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, Nimrod's Fortress, and the Royal Kurgan. Possibly many others we are yet to recognize. In conclusion, the vast array of different, as yet unidentified, advanced stone cutting equipment scars present within the cave, each leaving its own unique signature upon the stone. The shaping of these stones, unique to an unknown civilization's signature handiwork, found worldwide, used within an array of as yet unexplained ruins, academically claim to be of vastly different ages and the work of vastly different cultures. We find it not only clear evidence of academic fallacy, but incredibly compelling.